with Fabcrafts and more and today I'm just going to do a quick tutorial on how to create a script name in Illustrator to create an SVG to use with your Glowforge or other compatible laser cutter. Welcome back to my channel. I would love it if you would hit the subscribe button and if you find that this video is helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up and share it if you see other people needing help with this type of question. This also will work with final cutting machines like a Silhouette, Cricut, or Brother Scan and Cut. So let's get to it. It's really easy, but Illustrator can be a little tricky if you're new to it, especially if you are coming from Photoshop and you try to use some of the controls and options and they work a little differently. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up here to File and we're going to create a new file. So you can download Illustrator as a free trial or you may already have the Adobe Suite installed on your computer. It is a subscription service now. Long ago it used to be load up your CDs, but you do have to pay if you want to continue to use it. So here in the choices I have to create a new file, I do have this size that I use often for my Glowforge because it gives me a good idea of what I can use that will fit in the bed of my Glowforge Pro. But you can come over here and you can create any size you need. Um, some of these things really don't matter. I just, I go ahead and I leave it in RGB color and high resolution of 300 PPI. But we're creating a vector image here. So you're going to be able to resize it without any pixelation or issues. So we're gonna hit create and it's going to load up a new one over the top of this one, and here we are. So what you wanna do is just come over here. You should have these tools set up over here on your left-hand side. I'm using a Mac. You can come over here and click T for text, or you can just hit the T button for text. You have the options of how you want it to line up. I'm gonna go ahead and choose Align Center but really any of these are going to work out for you and you can move them around uh, as you will see as we go along. So then you need to click on your board and it will give you the Latin filler text here. I usually just start out by resizing it so I can at least see what I'm doing. And then you can go up here to where you see your fonts as long as you're still in the text and you have your text highlighted, go up to your fonts and I am just going to choose a simple script text and that's a little bit thicker so that you can see what we're doing. And I'm gonna go ahead and choose this font called Breather. I probably downloaded this font from Creative Fabrica, Design Bundles, or Defont.com. So here we have this text. And it is still text, it is not a shape. It has different attributes as text than it will when we do what we call create outlines. So I'm gonna leave this. If you look over here, you can see it has a fill of black and no stroke. And I'm gonna leave it like that while we work with it. So now what you wanna do is I'm going to go up here and click on the selection tool and now I get a box around there where I can resize. Now if you just pull on the corner, it will just kind of go berserk. If you want to keep it, the proportion's the same. You hold down the shift key and then you can resize and your proportions will stay the same. And I'm just going to go big with this so that we can see what we're doing. And now there are a couple different ways to do this. With the selection tool selected, that's this darker arrow, and you've selected your text, you can then right click and come down to create outlines, or you can also come up to type and come down to create outlines. There's also the keyboard shortcut that you can use, which is Shift Command O on a Mac. I think it would be Shift Control O on a PC. Once we choose Create Outlines, now I'm going to zoom in here so you can see it has outlined each letter individually. So you can see here, and if 
I've used a Cricut before, and so if you are used to using a Cricut, this also happens when you're working with script text where you have to weld it. It's kind of the same scenario here. So now we have each of these letters individually aligned. And if we were to load this right into the Glowforge interface, it's going to cut on all of the little lines that you see. So we need to get rid of those. And how we do that is we go up here to Window. And coming down, you want to find Pathfinder. And it's going to pop up probably over here on the right hand side of your screen. Um, I'm not going in, going to go into how to set up your screen and your options right now because we're just trying to get this done quickly, but you can customize how you see all of these different panels. But once you, if you don't see Pathfinder over here or if you don't know which symbol Pathfinder is, you can always come up for any of these panels and choose them from the window menu. Okay, so here we have Pathfinder. We have all of our text selected, and now we're going to choose this option. When you hover your mouse over, you can see the different options you have, and we want to use Unite. Some people call this welding. It's called weld in other programs, but in Adobe Illustrator, it's called Unite. And watch the lines down there. As you click it, they will disappear. And now all the letters are connected, and they will be ready to use to cut out. So once you've done that, for use in the Glowforge, what you can do, you can leave it like this and load it up and you will be given the option to change that layer to a cut layer. But when I know I'm just gonna cut something out, I will go over here to my fill and stroke and I will get rid of the fill. And then in the Glowforge app, cut lines are orange. So I now just go ahead and come over here to my swatches, or you can also double click on that little square and it'll bring up, and I choose an orange color. So that now when I click off of that, you will see that it is one big path, except for your eye. You just wanna be careful when you're cutting out that you don't lose dots to your eyes. But here now you have your cut lines, to load up into the Glowforge and your letters are all connected and you are good to go. So now from here, the easiest thing to do, if you want to, you can size this. If you know that you want this to be 14 inches wide, you can come up here now to window, transform, and here you will be given your measurements for what you have selected, okay? So if I only want this, let's go 16. I want this to be 16 inches wide. And as long as this little chain link is connected and doesn't have a line through it, it's gonna size it proportionally. If the chain, if the little link has the line through it, then it's going to just resize each one of these separately. So it was linked, so it sized it proportionally. Now you can, well, I'll show you how to save it. Go up to file, choose, I always choose save as. When you're creating a file from scratch like this, you can just go to save, but sometimes I'm working with files that I'm altering and I wanna still save the original file and so it is my habit to always just choose save as, but in this situation, you could also choose save. So I'm gonna choose save as. It doesn't have a title yet. Um, I'm going to just title this, and you can erase this whole thing right now because it's gonna change as soon as we choose SVG. And I'm just going to choose um, name test. And then you can choose where you want to save it. I'm going to go ahead and save it in uh, my Glowforge files. And down here, you wanna go down to the last one that says SVG. If SVG is the file you wanna save it as, for Glowforge, the SVG is what I wanna save it as. You can click, I'm on a Mac, so saving this on your PC might be a little bit different. I'm going to come over here and save it. I have a file called test files 
and I'm going to go ahead and save it in there. Now you can just leave all of these things as they are. One thing that you do want to make sure um, if you need this to stay at the same size that you saved it as and not get resized by any other programs, then you want to make sure that responsive is turned off. And so then you click OK and it should be saved in your file where you chose it to be saved. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and choose this and I'm going to delete it. And now I'm going to like maybe make a name that's actually a little more exciting than Lorem Ipsum, which is just the filler text in Illustrator. Um, so let's go ahead and we have clicked text and let's just go ahead and create the word beautiful. <clears throat> and there we go. You want to come over here. So you, we were on text. You want to come over here and click the selection arrow and then hold shift while you drag. Or you can also come over here to the transform window. And if you know you want it to be 16 inches wide, then just type in 16. And there we go. It's so beautiful. And now I'm just going to right click to bring up the option to create outlines. Remember, you can go up to type. You want to make sure that your text is selected. If your text is not selected and you choose type and come down to create outlines, it will look gray and you won't be able to click on it. And that's when you know you need to come back, select your text, go back to type and then choose create outlines. Here I'm going to right click and bring up the options here to create outlines. Remember it outlines each letter individually and then with everything selected, it is selected. We want to go back to the Pathfinder window. So you come to Window, Pathfinder, and choose this first one that welds or unites everything together. There is your word. Like I said, you can leave it with the fill and save it as we just did as a SVG, but I do like to turn the fill off. Choose the stroke. I come over here and find my swatches panel, or you can go to window and swatches, which it's already opened here. So you see it. I choose this light orange color as my cut and there you have it. Go to file, save as I've chosen the test files folder again. It remembered that I chose SVG last time. So I'm going to save that as SVG save. Oh, I need to change it though. We're going to change this to beautiful. If I could spell and save. So now let's go ahead and go to the Glowforge app. And here we are and we can go right to upload. You can, you can do new design or you can automatically upload it or you can drag and drop. So I'm going to go to upload and I'm going to navigate to my test files folder and choose beautiful and open. And it is going to load that up. Oh, I have some wood that I left. The Glowforge app remembers what it last saw on the camera. So <laughs> this is still in here. I'm going to choose medium maple plywood and I'm going to go ahead and scooch out. But here you can see now, oh, be careful. Um, if you want to make sure that the dots of your eyes move along with the rest of your words in Glowforge, uh, I believe it may be with the premium subscription, you can now right click and choose group. And now all of those will come together. But just be careful when you have dots of eyes and things like that, you may move your word and then your the dot of your eye is stuck out somewhere but now you would just go and turn your glowforge on and load everything up and cut this out so i hope that was helpful for you and i hope you create many beautiful words please if you liked this video if it was helpful 
please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button because I do plan on doing some more videos for creating files with the Glowforge. Have a great day. Thank you.